Okay, so let's go ahead and implement the particle filter in MATLAB. Um, this is coming from the tutorials I just did with the presenting the concepts in the first video, second video an example, and in the example we're looking at the Frequentesian Ninja Clan and what they're doing is basically trying to catch this quail. They don't like quails. The quails are, they th morbidly throw their eggs at the Frequentesian Ninjas, so they're trying to chase down this quail. However, the quail is very agile and very smart and so basically very magical. It uses this nonlinear way of running away and kind of has this like nonlinear measurement to it. And so it makes it very hard and all these like the students from the Frequentesian clan definitely can't catch them. They use linear systems and they don't really know not linear. However, the master uh, Frequentesian ninja, he's he's very good at a uh, nonlinear system. And so he knows a particle filter. And so we want to see how much like, you know, how much does he have to think? How much uh, computation, how many particles does he need to implement in order to accurately ch chase the quail? So let's go ahead and implement that. This is based upon uh, the equation stuff comes from Dam Simon's optimal state 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 estimation. Um, it's, I basically kind of readapted it, made uh, a lot of ways in which we could visualize some of the results and a lot more commenting to see the bits and parts of the way uh, these filters work. Okay, so here is what we're going to start off with. This is just for docking it irrelevant. So we're going to define our initial state as x our noise covariance in the system that is in the state estimate state update as xn the noise as r this is the noise in the measurement this is our duration of the chase let's just say it goes over for like 75 seconds or 75 iterations and let's make it 100 particles for just so we can visualize how this whole thing works and what we're going to do is we're going to use monte carlo simulation to generate the very first data set right the very first set of particles we're going to generate a hundred particles that are normally distributed around, uh, Gaussianly distributed around the starting value x, right? So that's what this is going to generate. And so that's what xp is going to be, this all 100 particles that are randomly sampled from around this distribution. If we want to take a look at it, we'll go over here. This is looking at time step one. This is flight position. So he's at point one is the real position. And here's our particles randomly sampled around it. Okay, now what we're going to look at is this is going to be our uh, positional position, uh, I'm sorry, our measurement update based upon that uh, state update. So this is, we have our state, which was x, which was 0.1, and now we're going to update our measurement. So this is our initial measurement. And we're going to define our uh, output vector for the actual state. This is our output vector for our actual measurement. This is our estimate from the particles, and this is going to be our output vector so we could plot all these things at the end. So let's look at time point one. And what we're going to do is we're going to update this, the state, right, based upon that equation. This is the actual state update. This is the actual measurement update based upon that state update. Now here's a particle filter step. We're going to, for every particle, 1 through 100, 1 through n, we're going to update each particle. So we have all these particles at different positions. We're going to update each particle with a new uh, predicted x position or x state. Then we're going to use that to update our measurement update. We're going to use that measurement update in comparison to what we really measure. Because again, we don't really know x, but we, can act, we do get z. And we're going to say, OK, given that update, what is the probability of getting that z we just saw? And we're going to do that for every measurement update. And that's what this is going to give us here. OK. Now, of course, we have to normalize this to form a probability distribution. We normalize that. And now we can look at some of the output real quick. So this is showing the observed value z. This is basically our z update here. So we got our state update. And then we map it onto our measurement update. And then we get our weighted values, right, based upon that update. So of course, we're going to expect that for our, for our observations, this is where the true observation was. Each observation is going to have a weighting that's going to have this shape, this Gaussian-like shape around that particular point. Because remember, the probability, if this is the real point right here, for example, the probability of getting this value is really low. Whereas if this is the real point, the probability of getting this value is very high. We then take these new weights that we got for each update and remap them onto the state that generated that uh, measurement update, which is over here. So it's not perfectly aligned to it. Sometimes it's going to be misshapen and weird because of the nonlinearities. And so 
this is what it's going to look like and this is basically the updates of the weights onto the actual measurements and here's the true measurement so you know it's a little bit off but not too far actually it's pretty accurate so this is weight magnitude and this is the position okay so we normalize it we plot that now what we're going to do is we want to see okay so now what about that resampling so let's go back and replot this so here's the data we sampled okay and here's the weight mapping of all those points. So here's all the points we resampled. I'm, I'm sorry, here's all the points we sampled from the initial um, uh, state transition for this initial update, right? And so, like we said, all these points may suck. Some of them may be good, some of them may be bad. And what our weight update allows us to do is kind of see which ones are good, which ones are bad. So while we had a lot over here and a lot over here, in fact, these ones were the ones that are better estimates given the data we got. So then what we're going to do is we're going to resample it. The way we're going to do that is um, it's just a kind of general procedure is that we have these new distributions. If we build the cumulative sum of that and then randomly sample from that, it's going to basically pick points more often that are these points and less the other points. That's just the, that's just the nature of um, a, a way of getting sampling from a distribution along its probabilities. So we do that. Then um, we want to get some final metric, right? So we got these new selected out uh, particles based upon the distribution using the cumulative sum. And then we take some value. In this case, the mean value would be interesting. We could also take maybe the variance of it as well if we wanted to see how confident we are in some sense. Get the mean of that. And so let's plot this after effect. So the red are the, are the particles that we resampled. We resampled the same number of them. We just sampled these over many, many times. And then we get the mean value of that, and that's our green value. So it's not exactly accurate to this, because we actually didn't sample enough points from here, but it's pretty good, especially given this very complicated nonlinear system. So let's just iterate through this a couple times and take a look and see how it performs. Oh, hold on one second. Sorry, these are commented out. Let me uncomment these real quick. And then we will then implement this. OK. OK, so this here's one example again of the observation value, the plotting, the, the weighting of it, and then it remapped onto the positional values. And then here's its performance. These are the select. The red are the selected out points. The green is the average point, and so the, it's kind of you compare the red to the green in terms of its performance. Um, and so here's an example. See, this distribution would have been over here, so we just kind of get part of this Gaussian, and then it looks really weird when we map it on top of the top of this value. It's because we didn't sample very well, and still though, it does pretty well by and large. And you could explore this in the code. It's going to be available on the website and just kind of mess around with this code and see how it looks. And so that's what we get out of there. So let's recomment this out and see how the whole system actually performs. Take this one out. Take this one out. OK, all those are out. OK, so let's just go ahead and rerun it. This is at an N of 100. And so the red is the particle filter estimate, and the blue is the actual positional position of the quail through time. And so this, uh, this ninja is doing pretty well, actually. He may catch the quail. And if he catches the quail, I feel like the Beijing clan, or at least the Beijing ninja himself, is going gonna, gonna to have issues with it. OK, so let's see what happens if we really truncate this value. Let's make this like 1. So it does bad. Right. I mean, at one, actually, it's surprisingly good for just one. Um, but as you can see, this distribution is pretty messy and pretty messed up overall after all these points. Um, but yeah, you could mess around and look at different values of this to see how it does. Uh, let's make n. I don't know. Let's make it 500, and it performs pretty well. Yeah, it actually fits perfectly for a lot of the data points. And let's just do, uh, let's make this like, instead, let's make it let's make it 10. It'll probably still do decent at 10. No, OK, so even at 10, it's still 1 obviously was horrible. 10 is really bad. Um, it might do better if we do it a couple times. No, you see the estimate. It's on for a little bit, and then it really loses it. 
Okay, and also if we had a much broader spread of the function, it would do much worse. But you get the idea. So this is the implementation. Go ahead and use it on the map. I have it there on the website. And you could then start changing the function. I mean, this is just one particular function. You could try different functions to see how it performs, different uh, wait, different uh, measurement um, functions, or you know, maybe the distributions are very different, and maybe this Gaussian is not that good, or increase R and see how the system performs. Okay? All right, that's it for now.